In 2003, a 2,500 year old miniature golden book was displayed in the National History Museum in Bulgaria. The late academic Alexander Fall says that the miracle book is Etruscan. The Etruscans lived in the first millennium BC on the Apennine Peninsula and never created their own state, but they had a serious influence on the emergence of the later Roman Empire. Many historians claim that the Etruscans are descendants of the Thracians with whom Aeneas reached the Apennines after the fall of Troy. The book consists of six pages made of 23.82 karat gold measuring 5 cm by 4.5 cm, connected by gold rings. According to scientists the golden book is more than two and a half millennia old. It was discovered seven decades ago in an old grave during excavation work for a canal along the Struma River in southwestern Bulgaria. Most shocking to me, however, is the way the golden Orphic book is displayed. Its setting is in a corridor pushed between two larger ones, out of any discernible context, making it inconspicuous. This find, which should occupy a central place and is surrounded by explanatory materials, bears the enigmatic label Golden Orphic Book, donated by a patriotic Bulgarian there is not even an approximate date. There is no mention of an explanation of what its likely purpose is or even what its six gold leaves depict. These people are either pretending they can't read some of the stuff, or I'm just imagining things. Source of the pictures YouTube from a report by Mrs. Irina Grigorova. The first page of the Golden Book from Struma depicts two women carrying a vessel on their shoulders. The report mentions it as a possible burial. In my opinion, this is a ritual procession to fulfill some customs. The second page of the Golden Book shows the following image, we see a horned animal, which the interpreters at the museum say is a deer or something similar. Yes but no. This is Taurus, and if you look under the animal itself, reading from right to left, Telnag which is Taurus. Another frequently asked question was, is the book in Thracian or Etruscan? I believe the text is in Etruscan. I judge this due to the presence of Etruscan words. Rene, sacrificial offering. Famna, glory. Lena, dead man. Clenu, descendant. Son, thi, pronoun, of this one. Thick, do. There are interesting personal names such as Achilu, which is Achilles. Velka, male name. Phallus slash Ballus. The Etruscan surname Lardalus, son of Lardus, is also clearly visible in the text. It is possible that the word Tezen engraved on the gold leaves is a name of the goddess Tezen the dawn. The word Athena is also easy to read. But I think that in this case it is not about the Theanum Athena, but about the adjective Athena paternal, of the same gender. The most frequently asked question was, what is the message of the book? Since I do not have clear images of the text, and the interpretation itself takes a lot of time, I paid attention to one page on which the letters are clearly visible. The text is not long, and the reading I think is, Rene Teek Filum Vemne Ciel and INST Athena THI Felkil Felk. I take the meaning to be this. In fulfillment of his duty to honor Silon Ionest, who was of the same race, Velka son of Velkas made an offering. The rest of the content on the page is as follows, as far as I can tell from the pictures. Saturi Nai, in all probability the name of Saturn. Among the Etruscans it is found as Sater. Alaltsa Oilal. Sesail. Telna, Nalurltis, Unreadable, MBU, DENP slash Larol slash Oi, Belly slash Slenyanzel. If it is translated, it will be interpreted as follows. Saturn full of brutality and power, to be poured requires oil, it is called Taurus. I can't make out the next sentence. It probably refers to the month and day when the ritual takes place. Belila Nunzel Bellis with Lenunzel. Bielis exists to this day as Ash in the Polish language. Unzel still means anointing in the Romanian language. Obviously, it explains what oils and herbs to use in the Saturn ritual, which is through this zodiac sign of Taurus and on a specific date. Among the Romans, Saturn is celebrated through Capricorn. 
it is possible that Taurus refers to a horn. On the next page, a horseman is clearly visible. Below the figure it reads Palat and Quat, flight or name of a hero, Palat. What the meaning is I cannot speculate. From bottom to top it says, O-N, Rama, Ramla slash Inina Abunlan slash, Risen Renioye colon slash Ospulgal Palat. Ula Ulensip doesn't read well Silu plus P slash Nailer. Elin plus Trauma is a famous ancient chief god in Hinduism. The Ramayana slash spiritual path is also known. In the Golden Book is Ramla A Nina, one type, Lena of Rama the teaching and spiritual path of Rama. Rizn also occurs later in the following golden pages, where we will interpret it. Ula U Lin Sipi, Linseed Oil Sipi, with the power of the Ipnalar deer, goddess Alpanu from the Etruscan sources. Apparently, this page also refers to the rules of a ritual that is performed in honor of the god Rama during the time of the zodiac of the horseman. The fourth page of the Golden Book represents a vessel. Under the vessel Vait San read Oipi, Oi Pi exclamation mark and quat. Unfortunately I can't interpret it. From bottom to top we read. Seliadzin, Sela is a famous goddess in the land of the Thracians and the Etruscans as well. It can be interpreted, Sela comes radiant and quat. Or it refers to the god Selvan known from Etruscan writers as well. Then the translation would sound like this. Seliadzin, Seliadzaini. Etruscan sources refer to this god as Selvansal Tula Rizenquat. It has been translated by Etruscan scholars as god of borders. I would translate it as the god the crafts, but that is a matter of interpretation. Obviously there are abbreviations or numbers that are not easy to interpret. What is certain to read is Salade's name, and the last sentence, Baal Amenquat. Again, it is understood that this booklet is from the time of the worship of Baal, mentioned in the biblical legends as the main god of Sumerians. On the fifth page of this book is this amazing picture. Below the figure we can read. A glupos this is perhaps a glaupi, familiar to us from Greek mythology, who is a siren, a creature with a bird's body and a human head. The last page presented to us in this order is, below the two figurines it is clearly read, Renioi's Bulut and Quat. There can be no doubt that it refers to the names of the characters. Renioi's name is already found on the horseman figure page. There it is called Risen Renioi if it can be interpreted as a drop of Renioi's or maybe Renioi's is scurrying around. However, it is clear here what it is about. This is the din of the twins in the sign Gemini, which later in human history the Greeks replaced with their twins Castor and Polydeuces in their stories. Moreover, in evidence of this thesis is the Etruscan god Pulu Tuk, whom the Greeks later took over as Pollux or Polydeus. From everything that I examined I convinced that the Golden Book is one of the most ancient zodiacal calendars for performing various rites. Each page is a zodiac sign. Well, six of the pages are missing, but they were either thrown away by someone when they were found, or the book was split into two parts by corrupted officials. This is a unique calendar of the great-great-grandfathers living on our lands even before the flood. What we know about the Orphic rituals, the Orphic mysteries were performed only by initiates, and these were only unmarried men. They were called ABE, non-living because he did not lead a normal and ordinary life. The sacraments took place in closed societies and hidden places, inaccessible to the eyes of other people, rocks and caves, which abound in the eastern Rhodopes, Stranza, and Sakar. They were accompanied by choral songs and mind games. Climaxes represented the symbolic death of the priest king, 
identified with the tearing of Dionysus by the Titans, and also the symbolic conception of the Mother Goddess, giving the beginning of life. The first was carried out through the blood sacrifice of a bull, a horse, a goat, and sometimes people. Conception was realized with mass intercourse between men and women. Later, the Orphic sacraments were personified by riotous bacchanales in honor of the god of wine and revelry, Dionysus.